Today we're going to be looking at Behemoth. It's one of those things that really mystifies HFC physics students, but it doesn't have to. So, to get started, here we have a armature. So this coil of wire here that I've built um, out of an old coat rack is representing an armature. And obviously armatures rotate, so the motor is going to begin to rotate like this, right? As you can imagine, the, 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 the motor is going to rotate. Now, let's quickly recall, why does a motor rotate? <laughs> well, the reason is because there is current running and there is a magnetic field. So in order to model that, I've got a little sticker for the current. So let's imagine that the current here is running like so. It's running this way. And let's imagine that there is a magnetic field running into the screen. So, so if you follow my, my, my figures, it's running into the screen. So, if we use our right hand slap rule, we remember that our thumb is, is the direction of current, our fingers is the, our four fingers represent the direction of the magnetic field, it's going to be pointing into the page. So if I have my, my right thumb pointing towards the right to match the direction of the current, and my four fingers point into the page, you can see that my, my palm faces upwards. Right, otherwise I'm going to be slapping upwards, so that means that the force will be upwards. So there's going to be an upwards force acting up here that's going to cause this side to move upwards. Be causing this side to move upwards. And back down. And we go around and around like that. So we've established um, why motors rotate, how they rotate. Our next part is to understand um, back EMF. So first we're going to examine um, this coil. Now, you'll notice that as I rotate it, actually, something interesting happens. If you remember how there is going to be a magnetic field here. Well, what does that mean? That means that there's going to be a change in flux. And in order to help you visualize this, what I've done is I've, is we're going to use the shadow on the wall to, to visualize this. So if you think about it in this position, in the upright position, there is going to be a lot of magnetic flux going through this coil. And you can see that through the light that is passing through the coil, right? So you can see all this light that's passing through the coil onto my wall. That is going to be the flux because it's the magnetic field lines passing through, the light passing through, they're very analogous. As it rotates, so, so as it rotates, 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 this position where it's kind of flattish, so it's a little bit difficult to position. Then in this position, you can see that on the, you can see that on the wall, it's a bit hard to see, but you can see on the wall, the shadow is pretty much a straight line, right? And because it's a straight line, that means that there's not going to be any flux passing through. So the main thing that I wanted to establish here is that you can see here there's maximum flux, as we rotate, as we've heard, it decreases, it decreases, it decreases, 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 until there's pretty much no flux left. Until there's pretty much no flux left. And then it back increases again to the maximum here. And then as it keeps rotating, it'll decrease, 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 until there's no flux. And the cycle continues and continues. So the main point here was to establish that there is going to be a change in flux inside this coil because it is rotating, right? So because the motor is going to be rotating because of the you know, right-hand right slap rule, um, F equals BIL, there's going to be, it, because it's rotating, there's going to be a change in flux inside the coil. Okay, so we've seen from before that if we have a armature like this, as it rotates into an upright position, there's going to be a change in the flux through, right? So we see like this, there's not very much flux through it because you're kind of, you know, it's like we saw where the light trying to shine into the, um, you know, against the uh, armature. There's just not much light that's going to pass through. Whereas opposed to here, we can have plenty of light pass through. So the main takeaway there is that as the armature rotates,
there is a change in flux over time. Hopefully that's a kind of ringing a bell. A change in flux over time gives us by Faraday's law an EMF. This is important, right? And actually, surprisingly, um, that's back EMF actually. This is the whole, you know, mysterious back EMF that we always speak about. This is back EMF. But there's a little bit more to unravel before we can really call it a day. So this is back EMF. Now, the other thing that we really need to think about is Lenz's law. So Lenz's law tells us that the EMF induced will always want to oppose the supply EMF or, what, or what, whatever created it. And to really understand that, we need to draw our, our armature again. So, so, so we need to ask the question, you know, what is actually creating this motion in the first place? Well, that's going to be the battery. So we're, so we're going to have to have a battery that's supplying the whole thing with a current, right? That's making it go, and we're going to have a force and everything like that. <laughs> so let's say that's you know, it's a nice little 9 volt battery that you might find in a toy or in, in the smoke alarm. That's going to be a 9. Um, So, and then we're going to have the back EMF. Now, now the back EMF, I'm going to draw in blue. The back EMF is going to oppose the supply EMF. <laughs> so it's it's not going to be like this. Because, you know, like this, now there'll be 9 plus 3, be 12 volts. That's, that's no good. Because that would mean that now the voltage is even bigger. Right, now the voltage is even bigger. Well, voltage increases, then then the current would increase, and that would mean that this, you know, by F is equal to BIL. If we increase current, then boy, we increase force, and if we increase force, and the whole thing spins faster, and the whole thing spins faster, well, hang on, the whole thing spins faster than, than this thing would, would increase, and then therefore EMF would increase, and then we simply go back to the start again. If EMF increases, then the current increases, and then force increases, and this increases. Basically, this thing would spin infinitely fast, right? So, this can't be the case. This, this would be a violation of Lenz's law, and also a violation of the law of conservation of energy. So this can't be the case. What actually happens is that and it doesn't want to cooperate. What actually happens is that it opposes it. So we actually have it as plus 3 volts over here and plus 0 volts over there. And you can see that what this really creates is something a bit more like this, where we have 9 volt, 9 volt, and 3 volt here. And so what that does is that basically now the actual difference between them is only 6 volts. <laughs> That might be a little bit confusing. If you want to see a little bit, if you want comfortable on this idea, um, we're going to go through in a little bit more depth. So, I want you to imagine this this nine volt battery. I want you to imagine this nine volt battery as a glyph, a cliff of nine meters. Right. So this distance here is nine meters. This is zero meters. This is nine meters. So you, you can see that the, that the difference between them is 9 meters. That, so this here, this 9 volts, represents this 9 meters. This 0 volts represents this 0 meters. And you can see that we have a difference between them of 9 meters. No thanks, Siri. Um, this is what we actually call the voltage. This is what we'd be like, oh, V is equal to 9 volts. Right. You can see that it could just as easily have been if I had something that is 1 meter off the ground, something that is 10 meters off the ground, the difference here is still going to be 9 meters. That is the concept of voltage. Voltage is the difference between the potentials, right? Because you can think about it, if, if a man fell off both of these places, he would be equally as injured because he's still falling 9 meters, right? It doesn't matter where you said that the zero point, <laughs> boy, it doesn't matter to his bones, they're still going to be broken as hell, right? Um, so you can see that the potential is the same. You see here that when we put in the the uh, the, the back EMF, what's what's going to be happening is that we're really going to be 
kind of add, like adding like a cushion. Right. So now this is three meters, right? So we've, we've, we've pumped it up three meters. So that means that the actual distance that he's going to fall, let's see, between nine and three, even though it's three meters, the actual voltage or the actual difference in these potentials is only six meters. That's why it's only six volts now. So now that we can understand, now that we can appreciate that it's going to be less full. So it's basically the the key thing is that back EMF, right, back EMF decreases the the net voltage across a battery or a motor. What does this mean for our motor though? Well, basically, it means this. If V is equal to IR, and we're decreasing our voltage, the resistance of the coil doesn't really change, um, it can't really change, then that means that our current must be decreasing. <laughs> well, golly, if, our, if my current is decreasing, F is equal to BIL, if my current is decreasing, that must also mean that my force decreases. Um, and so that means that there's, there's going to be less net force on my motor coil, which means that it's going to be turning less quickly. And so that's pretty much the main thing that, that you'll see as the back EMF begins to kick in. Right, so as back EMF kicks in. The uh, motor will turn more slow. The the sorry sorry the 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 motor sorry the the the, the uh, force the force the motor experiences will be less. So it it'll experience less you know force that's going to make it faster and faster and faster and faster. It'll begin to kind of. Uh, it won't decrease in speed, but it'll get f less fast. It'll, it'll, it'll decrease in its acceleration. So you can imagine that, that the velocity of the motor over time would kind of have the logarithmic curve like this. And we'll explain this in more depth in part two, which when we go through some questions, as well as part three, which is the advanced section um, that deals a little bit more with the nitty gritty of vacuum F. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in those spots. Bye-bye.